This is quite an interesting question. So here we have a parabola that has been given and they want us to find the maximum area of the rectangle. So if you're sitting here looking at this question and it seems like, how do you even start? That is normal. This is quite a weird question, but let me show you exactly how it works. So you got to break it down to the basics. They want the maximum. Okay, so that should make us think of calculus and they want the area. Okay, so that's the first thing we are going to go look for. We're going to go find a formula for the area of that rectangle. Now we know that the area of a rectangle would be this length, for example, multiplied by this length. Now we know that the coordinates here would obviously be 0 and 0 and they've told us that Q is X and 0. So then what would this length over here be? Well, it's X, right? And we can assume that this would also be X over here. And so the length of PQ is definitely going to be 2X. Now, to find this length over here, well, we don't really know much, but what we do know about R, what would, the, what would be the same for R and for Q? Well, they would have the same X value because they ver it's vertically above. So we can say that this would also be X, but then we'll just give the Y value. We can just call it Y, for example. But as we said, their X values are the same because they are vertically above each other. It's like having a coordinate over here, which is like 2 and 1. Then the coordinate directly above would have the same X value, but a different Y value. And so we could technically find this length now. What would it be, guys? Well, if that's Y and this is 0, then this whole length must be Y. For example, if we had the point 3 and 0 and 3 and 8, you would be happy to say that that length is 8. And so technically we could find a formula for the area of this rectangle now because we said that the length of PQ is 2X and the length of QR is Y. But now the problem with this is that we have two variables. Now, guys, when they give you an equation like this, it says y is equal to that. That is for the parabola, which means that you can use that equation for any point on this parabola. Okay, now that means r is on that point. And so for point r, you could replace this y with its equation. You could say y is equal to minus 2x squared plus 24 because it's on the parabola. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take that expression, put it in the place of y, and so we're going to get area is equal to 2x multiplied by negative 2x squared plus 24. We're then going to multiply everything out. There we go. Now guys, to find maximums or minimums, we always have to use the following approach. If I gave you a cubic graph and I asked you to find the maximums and the minimums, you would you would know that that's the turning point. And so that would be the first derivative equal to zero because the first derivative tells us about the gradient and at a turning point, the gradient is zero. And so that's what we do with these types of questions. We now take this equation for the area and we're going to find the first derivative. And so that's going to be negative 12x squared plus 48. We can then make that equal. And so then what we can say is 12x squared is equal to 48. x squared would be equal to 4 if you divide. And then x would eventually end up being positive or negative 2. But now we can see where this x is. It's on the right hand side. And so we'll just say that x is equal to 2. So we've found the x value, but now look what the question says. Sometimes the question only wants the x value, but in this one they say determine the maximum area. So what we can do is we can plug that x equals 2 back into this equation, or this one, it doesn't really matter. And so then we can say, therefore, area, I'm rather going to write it up here, area is going to be minus 4 in bracket 2 to the power of 3 plus 48 times 2. And that's going to give a 64. And so that is the maximum area. So sometimes the question will ask for the value of x, for example, and then sometimes they'll actually ask you to find the area. So then you must substitute your answer back into the original equation.